Would you guys that ever take a look at how to disable Microsoft Windows telemetry like Copilot and Recall the safe way? During the setup process when you're installing Windows, once you get to this screen right here, make sure you're disconnected from the internet and push Shift F10 and then the command prompt box will open, type OOBE backslash bypass NRO and push enter and this will restart the PC. And once this restarts the PC, it will boot back up and it will start to load up Windows again like we're seeing right here. You'll get this splash screen popping up right here. Remember, we still have no internet connection. You need to choose your country and then you need to choose your keyboard layout. Once we've done that, you'll see we can skip the second keyboard layout and right here you'll see let's connect you to the network. We want to say I don't have internet at this stage. This only pops up because we use that command and now we can go ahead and set up our computer with a local account. This is a great way of bypassing any sort of forced Microsoft account that they try to force on you during the installation process of Windows 11. So now you can just go ahead and go through the normal procedure and say no to all of these ones right here because these are all to do with telemetry. We're going to be disabling a lot of this stuff later on. But just go through here and say no here for all of this stuff. Once we do this, go through the normal installation process. Now before we continue, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for cheap Windows keys or Office keys or any sort of best-selling game keys, then you can check out the links in the video description. Create yourself an account and then you'll be able to purchase any of the products on their website at a 30% discount using my promo code capital B capital R 09 and I'll show you that in a second. But if you're looking for Windows keys, then their website is the place to go for that. And I'll show you how to purchase these and then use these keys to either do an in-place upgrade from home to pro or whether you want to do a fresh install and use the key that way you can also do that as well so let me show you basically how you can go about purchasing these keys so first what you need to do is select a key of your choice whether it'll be a windows key or office key like you can see right here so what you need to do is create yourself an account and choose the product you want to purchase just like this windows 11 pro key select the buy now button and then this will take you to the purchase page where you'll be able to then use my promo code right here on this section right here. This is where you're going to put in my promo code capital B capital R09. Apply that to your order and you'll see the price change right down on the bottom right hand side. And this is in Great British Pounds and you can see that's give us a 30% discount. Submit your order. They would then send you your key. You can then go ahead and activate your version of Windows like this and you will then be up and running with an activated version or you can upgrade from home to pro. Anyway, let's get back on with the video. So first what we're going to do here is show you the safest way of going about basically removing all of these applications and also turning off a lot of settings, debloating Windows in a way uh, to make it easier for you. So like I tell people all the time, using scripts can be risky, especially if you don't know where these scripts are coming from. But if you've got the home version and you've purchased one of them keys and you're now using home, you can use what we call the group policy editor to change a lot of these settings. And it will turn all of these off and they will not go back on even after an update. I've shown you that before and I've proven that in a previous video. So let's go ahead and take a look at Winver here. We're using 24H2, which is the latest version of Windows. And of course, this has a lot of stuff on here that people don't want like AI, Copilot, and also Recall and all that nasty stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at how you can go about doing this. Now, I have made a full video on this, so I'm not going to go right away through the whole process, but type group policy inside the search and open up the local group policy editor like this. Inside here, this is all these programs are doing and these scripts are doing. They're basically changing policies and turning these policies off so they are not running and this is all you can do inside windows you don't need any scripts and you don't need any programs to do this now this is where all your privacy and security settings are for your applications you can go through here double click on these and this box will pop up here go to enabled and then go to default for apps and then put false deny push apply push ok and repeat that process for all of the applications that you want to disable I've gone ahead and done all of this, but I'll show you one more time here. Double click on it, push enable, 
false deny, click apply and click OK. I've left the microphone and I've left the camera because a lot of people use their camera and microphone. If you disable these, you will not be able to use that on Windows. This gives you a lot more control and it gives you an understanding of what you're actually doing on your computer. Whereas when you run a script, it's doing it all for you without actually telling you what it's doing. You can actually read some of the dialogue here and it will show you. Now you can see we have some of these settings are managed by your organization. They are turned off by default now. We can see they're all off and that's exactly what we want. And that's all these programs and scripts are going to be doing. You can see the feedback now has gone off and you can just make a, a change right here and go never right here and this will then be off. Now there's some other settings you can go ahead and change inside the group policy. I have made full videos on this, but I'll show you some of them here so you can see. For instance, this one right here, turn off the application telemetry. If you look and read the information, it tells you exactly what it's actually doing. So these are much more easier ways of disabling stuff and debloating Windows because it's actually telling you what to do right here. Whereas the scripts you're running I'm not telling you anything. All it's doing is just running a bunch of settings in the background and turning stuff off. And it might be something that you need. This way you can have more control. Now to remove all the shortcuts and all of the apps on here, there is an actual bit of code you can use. It's very simple and it just removes a lot of the stuff like the Xbox app, Windows apps, like Maps, your, pro, your phone and things like that. And you can just go through and push yes here and this will give you more control over what you actually want to disable and delete from your computer super super easy a much more easier and safer way of doing things rather than just going ahead and running some script in a background that gives you no control and then you end up deleting or disabling stuff that you actually need a lot of this stuff is just junk and a lot of people are not going to use it like microsoft people uh, the skype app one note and also you've got also the feedback hub and a bunch of other different stuff here. You don't have to disable or delete them all. You can choose what you want to do. I'll try and leave this in the video description or on my website. But again, like I've told people before, this is the easiest way of going about doing things because this way you're not going to accidentally remove stuff and then not knowing how to put it back. This is the easiest and safest way of debloating windows and turning off a lot of settings that you don't need. Now, like I said before, there is some advanced scripts out here that will actually rip a lot more out here. But again, like I've said, a lot of stuff can be uninstalled quite easily. And let me show you right here how you can go about doing it. All you need to do is go into settings here, go to apps, go to installed apps. And yes, it's time consuming, but it gives you more control. And just click on uninstall. And it's that simple. There's no need for going out there and trusting someone else's script that you don't know what it's doing. You can then have control over what you want to remove from your computer. Don't worry about Microsoft Edge. I'll show you how to remove that if you're one of those people that want to remove it. Microsoft OneDrive, Microsoft Teams, all that stuff can be removed by going into the installed app section and just clicking on them and uninstalling them, clicking on the three dots, just like you see here. And people would like to make out this is really difficult to do, and it is very straightforward and easy to do. It is a bit time consuming, but like I said, this gives you much more full control of your system and you know what you're removing and you can remove exactly what you don't want and you can keep what you do want. It's that simple. And uh, there's no need to run scripts on your system to do this sort of stuff. If you go back into privacy and security now, you'll see all of this stuff has been disabled. If you follow some of my previous videos on how to use the Group Policy Editor, you'll see how to do all of this. It's very simple and easy to do and gives you much more control. You can then save your settings and export them. And when you do a fresh install, you can just import them again and they'll all be automatically imported back in. All of this stuff has turned off, as you can see here. No need to download any applications or any of that stuff. It's all turned off in the group policy. That is how a lot of this stuff is being done anyway with these apps. They're just running some form of script in the background to disable this stuff. That simple. Now, once these have been disabled, they are turned off. They're not going to turn themselves back on for a Windows update. This is not the case. 
Now, if you did a feature update, these policies will be set and they will not revert back to default settings. You can see everything has been turned off by just going through the uh, group policy editor and turning things off. We've not had to sign into a Microsoft account once. We do have a local account here and all of these settings now are turned off and this will alleviate a little bit of system resources if you're on an old system. I don't really see much difference turning this off on a new computer in my honest opinion, but if you're running an old potato computer, then this will probably help. All these settings right here can be adjusted and once you've done these, it will reduce the way it looks down on the bottom. And then you can put in dark mode and you're good to go. Now, download a browser of your choice if you want to uninstall Edge and you don't live in the EU country that gives you the ability to uninstall Edge. If you're living, say, like the United States, you will need to use some form of script to basically uninstall that. Or you can use a program which I've showed you before to uninstall Edge that way. The Shadow Whisperer's uh, Edge Removal tool will actually remove Edge. Unfortunately, you are going to have to use something like this to uninstall Edge if you don't live in an EU country, because in an EU country, Microsoft were forced to allow people to uninstall a lot of this stuff, whereas if you live in the United States, you don't get that privilege, and you will have to go through a few steps like this to remove Edge from the computer if you want to. So this is the only way you're going to be able to remove Edge and uh, I'll show you how to use it. It's that simple. So let's go ahead, and I've already installed uh, Chrome here, but I've just started up this script here because we don't need to uh, have Edge on the system once we get Chrome on here. And you can see Chrome has already replaced Edge. Edge has been removed from the computer by running that script. It's that simple to remove Edge. It's not that difficult. And now we've got no Edge on the computer, and we are now running at Google Chrome, just like you can see here. It's completely removed from the app section right here. And just put in 30 minutes of your time and you will have a system looking clean, just like this. No need to run scripts and use uh, custom ISOs and things like that to have a nice clean operating system with any sort of bloat on there. It will remove it. Yes, you can go into services as well and do some stuff in there. If you want to see a video on that, an updated video, let me know. I have made older videos on it, but if you want to see an updated one, let me know in the comments section down below. Anyway, with that said, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Have a lovely weekend, and I shall catch you in the next video, or I'll catch you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.